So I'm going to show you how to make this neat CRT scanline effect. Um, I got a few people asking me how I managed to get this result. So I'll go through the process real quick because it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm using Photoshop CS6 for this. Uh, I haven't really tried this on anything else, but I imagine it works the same way on any of the newer versions of Photoshop. If anything, the UI just might be organized a bit differently. So keep that in mind. So once you have your image set up, ready to go, you're going to want to take it and make it super low res. Uh, I recommend keeping it at anywhere lower than 320 by 240 pixels because that's the that's the authentic CRT scanline resolution. <clears throat> Uh, and if the image is too big, then you won't be able to sell the effect very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image, image size. The current image size is 14, around 1400 pixels. So what I'm going to do, uh, I think a comfortable size for this image is about 185 pixels width. And Photoshop is automatically going to do the height for you. And you want to make sure that you have nearest neighbor as the scaling method selected. Press OK. Scroll in, and it's kind of crusty and weird looking right now, but it's okay. The scanline effect will make it look a lot better. So now we're going to get to making the scanline pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, New, name it whatever you want to name it. I'm going to just call it CRT Scanline Pattern 1. Uh, and the width has to be 3 pixels by six pixels so three pixels height by six three pixels width my bad by six pixels height so press ok and you're gonna have to zoom in real far uh get up close to it so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to make sure that you go into the color picker and you have the color selected to just completely black and you're gonna want to make the bottom half of this completely black the top half, you're going to want to go back to the color picker and you're going to want to select a gray color. Uh, I recommend for this just to go into this little box here and make it around from 35 to 40. I'm going to do 35. Press OK. So what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to make this top half gray, except for these two pixels right here. You want to leave that white. So now what you want to do is you want to go to Edit, Define Pattern, you can name it whatever you want. This is currently using the name of the file, so I'm going to keep it that way. And press OK. So now what we're going to want to do, this next part super important, is we want to go to the original image that we have. And we want to take this image's scale and multiply it by 6. So we're going to go to image, image size, Whatever resolution you have here, you want to make sure you multiply this by 6. So we have 185. 185 times 6 is 1110. And we want to make sure that the scaling method here is set to nearest neighbor so that the pixels are completely preserved. Press OK. And now we have the same exact image. It's just multiplied by 6. So now we're going to go to this layer icon here. Double click the layer icon and it's gonna bring up a layer style window. Go down to pattern overlay and this ugly ass bubble pattern is gonna show up. Ignore that and just go to this down arrow here and select the pattern that we made. Now you're gonna to wanna to go to blend mode and select multiply. Press okay and we sort of almost have the scan line effect down except it doesn't look very good and it's super sharp and dark. So we're going to make this pretty by duplicating this layer and rasterizing the new layer we just made. And then we go to adjustments, this, this little button right here, it's the adjustment button, and we select levels. Once you have this little levels thing up, you want to take this bar and you want to move it to the right so that the bright colors are super exposed and the dark colors just kind of darken. Uh, the amount that you want this at is relative to your image that you're using. So just keep that in mind. Just mess around with it and see what looks best. I'm going to keep it at, for this image, I'm going to keep it at this much. So what you're going to want to do is take this adjustment layer, select the bottom layer underneath it, and you're going to want to select merge layers to merge them. 
Now what you're going to want to do is take this layer, go to filter. You're going to want to blur it. So you're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you're going to want to blur it just so that the lines kind of blend together. <clears throat> I'm going to do it at like 1.7. This might be, like I said, like before, this might be a bit different depending on the image that you're working with. So just to have them, just to have like nice looking blended together lines. Press OK. And now what you want to do is you want to, when this layer is selected, you want to go to this little drop down menu and select linear dodge with add in parentheses. So already looking slightly better, but what we're going to do now is because this layer is so dark, is we want to go to image adjustments brightness and contrast and we're going to just put brightness all the way up and contrast actually down because for some reason that just looks better okay that's actually a good idea to maybe do it more than once because the image was so dark brightness i'm going to do it like this much and i'm going to do contrast down even more maybe not all the way something like this so now we're getting there we have a nice image what i want to do now is because this is up to you whether or not you want to keep it but i'm not really crazy about these super sharp lights here that the that this layer over here is creating so i'm going to blur this layer i'm going to rasterize it and i'm going to blur it just a bit really like mild blur like a few pixels i'm going to do like five maybe six i'll do six so yeah this effect's pretty much down this is pretty much the effect uh if you want you can go in and put these two in a group duplicate the group and go here go to blending options right click after right clicking it and you want to deselect the r channel okay Select the move tool and with the arrow keys, just move it so that you kind of have a cool little RGB shift. And yeah, that's pretty much the effect. So actually one more thing, I want to apply the same exact effect to an image that was designed to be on a CRT screen. So I'm gonna go here and I have this wonderful metal slug screenshot. This was pretty much designed to be on an arcade screen. So I'm gonna show you this effect and I'm gonna show you that even on this, it looks pretty damn good. So let's get into it. <clears throat> because this is already the original resolution, there's no scaling down required, but I am gonna to have to scale up six times. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Which image size. Four times six is one eight two one eight two four. There's neighbor. Okay. Right over here. Pattern overlay. Select their cool ass pattern. Multiply. Okay. I'm going to duplicate this bad boy. Mer and not merge, oh, rasterize. We're going to go to adjustments, levels. Just gonna zoom in to get a good idea. That's about right. Merge these. Then I'm going to. right in the hell out of this oh wait no, hold on i gotta blur it first haha -ha. zoom in i will do this much that much of a blur I'm going to image adjustments, brightness and contrast, boom, contrast down. Do it one more time. 
get it looking real nice. All right, I'm going to go here. Then your dodge. Oh baby, we're getting there. And now we're gonna rasterize this layer. Filter. Gaussian blur. Mild Gaussian blur. Don't want it to be overbearing. Do point four. Okay. And it's just for the sake of looking similar to the last one. I'm just going to duplicate group of this blending options. Turn off the R channel and shift it a bit. Not that much. Duh, there you go. I like it. There you go. Yeah, there it is. There's the effect. I think that looks pretty flippin' fucking good. I'm very happy with whatever this is. <laughs> Bye.